قل هذه سبيلي ادعو الى الله على بصيرة انا ومن اتبعني وسبحان الله وما انا من المشركين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على الأشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا وحبيبنا محمد ابن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد Brothers and sisters in Islam I greet you with the greeting words of peace السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته In continuing our series of lectures on the treatment of the Muslim ruler or the ruler that ascribes himself to Islam what we like to do in this and the following three lectures is to look at four important principles or usul that the Sunni Muslim, the Muslim who ascribes the way of the Salaf al Salih or Ahl al-Sunnah wal Jama'ah they must take into consideration when discussing and talking about the affairs pertaining to the Muslim ruler. This principle, the first principle, is a very important principle. And this principle is that the Muslim, he or she, must affirm and they must assure themselves that any news or information that they hear, especially when it refers to the ruler, is authentic. And they must be sure that the person who is carrying this news or this information is somebody who is trustworthy. For indeed, much of the news and information that we come across is carried by those people whom are either not truthful or by people whom we do not know and thus their narration cannot be trusted. Now this principle can be found in the 49th chapter of the Quran which is Surah Al-Hujurat and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says إِنْ جَاءَكُمْ فَاسِقٌ بِالنَّبَئٍ فَتَبَيَّنُوا أَنْ تُصِيبُوا قَوْمًا بِجَهَالَةٍ فَتُصْبِحُوا أَلَى مَا فَعَلْتُمْ نَادِمِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and the translation of this into the English language is يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا O oh, you who believe, in ja'akum fasiqun bin naba'in, if there comes to you somebody who is a fasiq, who is disobedient to Allah, with news or information, fatabayyanu, that is investigate, to affirm, to try and see that this is correct and true. An tusibu qawman bi jahalatin fatusbihu. So investigate lest you harm a people out of ignorance and become regretful over what you have done. So Allah tells us in this verse the importance of one that any news or information that comes to you by somebody especially somebody who is disobedient that you must verify and test the veracity of this information and if you don't then there's a possibility you may say or act upon it and you become regretful for what you've said and done now the great scholar of his of uh, Quranic commentary known in the Arabic language of as Tafsir Ibn Kathir he says about this verse and he comments on this verse by saying Allah the exalted ordered investigating the news that sinners and the wicked bring to make sure of its authenticity. Otherwise, if the sinner's word is taken for granted and a decision is based on it, regardless of whether the information is true or not, the authorities will be taking lead of the sinners. And so we see that the great scholar tells us that it's important for us when people come with news, especially those people who are sinful or disobedient to Allah, that we have to verify the authenticity of it. The great scholar, the Sheikh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he says concerning this, this verse that the information or the news of the person who is disobedient is listened to. However, it is 
tested for its veracity, for its truthfulness and its authenticity. And it's not obligatory upon the person to either affirm what they say or to, to disaffirm what they say, except by its authenticity, testifying, is it true or not true? And then he mentions the verse, this verse from the Quran. An important side point here is, and the benefit here, is concerning the news or the information by the person who is unknown or in the Arabic language, majhul. The person who is unknown or majhul, their testimony or their information, should I say, their information and the news they bring is the same as the person who is disobedient. Why? Simply because the person who is unknown, we do not know his state. Is he somebody truthful or somebody not truthful? And so if you take the news or the information of somebody who is not truthful, it's possible, as the ayah tells us, that you may say or do something. And because you based your action or your saying on the word of somebody who is not truthful, you will do something which you will regret afterwards. And so the person who is not known, who is much whole, their news or information is the same as the person who is openly disobedient. And so we understand that the, the information or news from the person who is truthful, known to be truthful, is accepted. The news or information from somebody who is a liar is rejected. And the news or information from somebody who is disobedient or somebody unknown, then this is neither affirmed or disaffirmed. Rather, its veracity has to be checked and affirmed. And so in conclusion, the first and major principle is that any news and information that comes to the believer, they must test for its veracity, for its truthfulness. And they're not to say anything, they're not to act upon it, and they're not to do anything until the, the news of this information, its veracity, is affirmed. Secondly, that if we act upon information from the person who is either disobedient or unknown, that we may say or do something for which we be regretful, possibly regretful in this life and the next life. And indeed, as a side point and a very important point, the person who speaks about the ruler in private sittings or in their lessons or their lectures or in their Friday sermon, Khutbat al Jum'ah, then this person is considered to be disobedient. And we will talk about this in further lectures, inshallah ta'ala, because this is not the methodology of Ahl sunnah wal Jama'ah, to speak about the ruler or the person in authority behind their back in lectures, in sittings, in ga gatherings, or on the, 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 on the member during the Friday sermon. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those people if they are given from his bounties, they are thankful. If they are afflicted with trials and tribulations in this worldly life, that they are patient. And if they are sinful, that they ask Allah for his forgiveness. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Qul hadihi sabili ad'u. إلى الله على بصيرة أنا ومن اتبعني وسبحان الله وما أنا من المشركين